allow me to explain. I'm seeing insane amounts of stupidity and misinformation in the chat about this game. Because I'll tell you right now, I already saw people in chat. It seems like they were going like this. <laughs> I can't wait. Today's my time. I can sit here and crap on Hellblade 2 all day. Uh, no. You don't go to the Taylor Swift concert, sit front row, and yell at her, You suck! I hate your music! You suck! <laughs> Today is the release of Hellblade 2. So let's talk about this because already I'm seeing insane amounts of stupidity and misinformation in the chat about this game. All right. And with that, this clip is already off to a riveting start. Do we immediately start scolding your chat at the mere mention of the game that you're playing for stupidity and misinformation is kind of something else. Because where a normal streamer would just come out and address the things that people are saying in the chat and clear up any sort of miscommunication about what the game is and what their expectations should be. DSP doesn't hold back. He comes out swinging. He's coming for your throat. <clears throat> Hellblade 2 or Senova's Saga is the sequel to the 2017 game, uh, Hellblade Senova's Sacrifice, okay? If you played the game, you know all about what it's like, but for those who didn't, allow me to explain, all right? Hellblade is a game that is mostly narrative-based, okay? There's definitely gameplay elements, combat, puzzles. I would argue it's like God of War, light, light, light. And what I mean by that is like some of the combat and stuff takes elements from like a game like God of War and some of the puzzles you have to solve for sure. In fact, the visuals also kind of look like God of War from that time period. And I don't think that I have to say this, but I'm gonna say it anyway. If you have to add the word light that many times to just make a comparison to another game, then it's probably just better off not being compared to that game. You could just call it an action adventure with puzzle mechanics. By no means are you obligated to compare it to any game, let alone God of War. So there's no reason to add that many lights. There's no reason to try and stretch what it means to be like God of War. But for some unknown reason to me, he feels inclined to continuously compare it to God of War, even though it's barely like the game at all. But it definitely is a less of a focus on gameplay elements and more of a focus on narrative, graphics, sound design, and essentially a cinematic experience, okay? And that right there is exactly the reason why he was even interested in playing this game in the first place. Because not only is it a sequel to a game that he's already played and pretended to enjoy, but it's free on Game Pass and it's essentially a walking sim that has minimal to no gameplay at all. And look, people are allowed to enjoy their walking simulators. If you enjoy a good narrative in a video game, more power to you. But this is very clearly an excuse for DSP to stream something without actually having to engage in any sort of gameplay or game mechanics in general. I remember... When I played Hellblade 1, I originally didn't play it when it was a new release and people were like, oh, you're missing out. Like this game actually is quite good. You really should check it out. So eventually I did. And when I did, I was legit blown away. I was like, I had no clue. First of all, I didn't, I couldn't believe this game had been made by, by Ninja Theory, which is not a ginormous AAA studio, by the way. It's not like there's some giant studio with unlimited budget. You know, they're not known for these giant scale games. <clears throat> and they made this game and it looked so good. I was like, this is like almost best in class visuals at the time in 2017. I was like, well, how does it look this good, right? And who would have figured? The first piece of praise that DSP actually has to throw at the game that apparently he enjoyed so much was that the game looked fantastic, dude. But I do unfortunately have to give him some slack on this one because that was one of the main selling points for the first Hellblade game was the game did actually look really, really good. Do really good graphics make up for boring gameplay? I don't personally think so, but he very clearly does. But that's kind of a predicament for DSP, because his audience has made it very clear by now, even though about 80% of them are LARPers by my guesstimation, that their opinion is more in line with mine, and that they would much rather see interesting gameplay over impressive visuals. Imagine my surprise to hear that when people go to watch a streamer play a video game that they actually want to see the streamer play the video game instead of just gushing over the visuals the entire time. And... I remember playing through it, and here's the thing. The game is constantly making you wonder what's going on because the whole premise is that the main character has some kind of like mental illness or mental break where she's hearing voices, she's seeing things, and you don't know what's real and what's not. Like you literally can't tell in the game what's happening. And that's intentional. Like that's actually legit intense, intentional that you're supposed to always be guessing and wondering. Is this something that's haunting her from the past and she's fighting through it in her mind? Or is this legit real in real life? Is she being attacked by real people and, and things? Like what is going on? You know, the more that he describes Hellblade 1, I'm honestly inclined to believe that he genuinely did enjoy the game because it sounds right up his alley. I mean, it's a game with fantastic visuals and almost no gameplay. And the story is told in such a way that it's okay to be confused for the majority, if not the entire time, which DSP was gonna do anyway. So maybe he wasn't pretending to like the first Hellblade game. Maybe he really did enjoy it. I guess the only real way to ever find out is to go and watch the gameplay and look at his genuine reaction. But I won't be doing that for obvious reasons. And the obvious reason is that DSP gameplay is yucky. So, in that regard, as a narrative-based game, alright, with 
amazing visuals at the time, it absolutely works. Now, it's also a short game. I remember that game was what? Like, um, I want to say Hellblade 1 was probably around like maybe like 10 hours, 8 hours. I can't remember, actually. I wonder. Hold on. I can actually look that up, how long my playthrough was. I don't know why I didn't do that, because I was curious how long was the first game compared to the second. So give me a second here. Here, content. Hellblade. So here it is. From August 2017. And by the way, I had no idea that this was seven years old. It doesn't feel that old, does it? It really doesn't feel like, like Hellblade was seven years old. Um, So my playthrough was 32 parts. Each part was around 15, 10 to 15 minutes. They varied. And the last part was a half an hour. So if you do the math, probably around six to seven hours. If we assume that each one of those parts is 13 minutes and then we add the 30 minutes in for the finale, it comes out to 7.2 hours, which is just over seven hours total. So quick math's DSP is accurate this time. Way to go. Gotta give him credit where you can because you don't get to too often. All right, for this game. Not the longest game, correct? I mean, that's pretty short. Um, But again, that is what they're going for. They're going for a shorter cinematic experience. All right. U ultimately, I remember when I beat the first Hellblade, I was like, wow, I really like that game and I have no idea what just happened. Like seriously, like you beat it and you're like, I don't know what just, it was that all real? Is she just imagining this entire scenario in her mind? Like what's going on, right? Does anybody want to take bets on whether or not DSP actually looked into the story to understand it? Does anybody legitimately think that DSP went on the internet and watched those super in-depth, obsessed style videos that he apparently hates so much when it comes to the Fallout series? Because if we had to put money on it, my money would have to be on no. I think that he actually finished the game and didn't understand what had gone on in the story and didn't put the pieces together and then just never looked any deeper into it and moved on with his life. But don't worry, you guys. He's a super big fan of the game and he's very excited to be playing the sequel. Of course he won't be confused the entire time because he didn't understand what happened in the first game. That would just be ridiculous. Also one people should re re realize that this, this series is not a full-fledged retail series. They're not charging $70 for these games. I don't know what the cost of Hellblade was when it released in 2017, but it was not, you know, 60, 70 bucks. It was probably like 30, 40 bucks, something like that. So they know that it's a shorter game so they're going to, you know, not charge a full price, okay? So anyway, um with that being said, shout out obviously all right, I liked the first game. I actually genuinely enjoyed it and had a good time with it, despite the fact that after I beat it, I really didn't know what was going on, <laughs> right? I was like, oh, okay. Uh, so here we are seven years later. And to me, that all but confirms that he still doesn't know what was going on during the first Hellblade game. Because if he did, I would imagine that he would be providing at least a brief synopsis of what happened in the first game. If for no other reason than to just fill time so that it's not filled with dead air instead. But the mere lack of a plot summary just screams to me that DSP couldn't give you one even if he wanted to. Because he absolutely loves giving stupid plot summaries that nobody asked for. Just take a look at any of his movie reviews for an example. He can't help but give you an entire summary of the plot. Spoilers and all. Hellblade 2, okay? So everyone on the internet, of course, is talking about it today. Just a small pet peeve of mine when he says things like this, because once again, none of the people that I talked to were talking about this game. So don't say everybody on the internet is talking about it. What you mean to say is that all of the reviews are coming out and that all of these websites are writing about the game. I don't think that Hellblade 2 is really big enough of a game to say that the entire internet is a buzz with it or whatever. And the reviews are out and it's hilariously mixed, okay? You got some people who are like, all right, so the visuals, again, pretty much best in class. Like you're gonna be blown away with how Hellblade 2 looks because they really worked hard on these visuals to make them look amazing, whether you're playing on Xbox or PC. However, the game runs at 30 frames on Xbox, just like the first one. The Hellblade 1 was 30 frames, Hellblade 2 is 30 frames. Now on PC, <clears throat> depending on your hardware, you can push the visuals and you can get it 60 frames or higher, but it's really more depending on your hardware setup. On Xbox, you're basically just, you're playing it on 30 frames no matter what. Okay. And I guess you can put that one up on the board. Another PCW for the master race. Let's f***ing go. And I'll say this every time. You would think that for somebody who's as obsessed with graphics and frame rate as DSP, that he would have made the jump to PC a long time ago. But despite how much easier it is getting to be a PC gamer, how streamlined the process is actually getting, it's still far too complicated for DSP to figure out. I mean, could you really imagine this guy trying to figure out whether his specs are good enough in order to run a game for his stream? Given the way that he makes his content right now I'm inclined to believe that that would be an entire stream where he would just argue back and forth with his chat on whether or not he would be able to run a game but now that I'm saying that out loud I kind of think that it would still make for better content than what he typically does on an average day audio supposedly 
The audio is ridiculously amazing. They did all this directional audio and different things with the audio that's supposed to be like groundbreaking. But I have a neck phone surround setup that's supposed to have surround sound. Sometimes it works well and other times not so much. I don't know how much I'm gonna be able to hear this. You guys won't hear it because on YouTube, they don't do directional audio. Yeah, YouTube is, it only does the uh, like stereo or whatever from what I under understand. It, I, you know, I, I've heard that there are ways to do it, but a standard stream like mine, you're not gonna get surround audio. So sadly, probably neither I or you are going to get the full experience of what this game would be like if you were like sitting in a surround sound room or had like surround sound high-end headphones on. You're just not gonna get that here, okay? Shout out the neck phone surround setup, I guess. Even though it's apparently incapable of doing any sort of surround sound so that DSP can get the actual experience that he's supposed to be getting with this video game. I also love that he says that there's no way that his YouTube stream could possibly support surround sound setup for the audience. But then he immediately goes back on that by saying that he did see that there's a way that you could do that, but he didn't go out of his way in order to make that happen. Because that totally doesn't make you sound lazy. I genuinely think that he would have been better off had he not mentioned that there was a way for him to do a surround sound style stream. But please take notice as well that the first two things that he had to say about the game through all of the reviews that he was seeing online was that the game looks good and sounds good. No mention of gameplay, no mention of any sort of new mechanics that are cool and innovative ideas. No, none of that, just that the game looks and sounds great. Because of course, high fidelity both visually and auditorially is the most important aspect to a video game, you know, an interactive medium. Gameplay, for what I'm to understand, Hellblade 2 is very, very much like the first game. Is there combat? Yes. Are there puzzles? Yes. But for the most part, you're walking around exploring in a world that's incredibly unique and visually stunning, but confusing. You can't tell what's real and what's not, or if anything is even real. The story is cryptic, and you're trying to piece together the pieces of the story to understand the game. It's pretty much the same game as the first one, only it's not the same story. You know, the story's continuing. Um... Why does he feel the need to clarify that? Yes, DSP, when you say that something is very similar to something else, you don't have to clarify that it's not exactly the same thing. I'm sure that most people on the planet would have understood that before your clarification. But I guess we are talking about your viewers, your fans, your dents. So maybe they did need the extra clarification. I just couldn't imagine pandering to that. But we did finally and thankfully get a mention of some gameplay. Combat and puzzles, it sounds pretty robust, but I noticed that DSP didn't actually say whether or not the combat and the puzzles were interesting or fun. He just mentioned that they were going to be existing and that the majority of the gameplay was going to be walking around and trying to figure out the story, which I'm sure was absolutely miserable for everybody that actually watched the gameplay. I definitely couldn't sit through an entire stream of this guy, you know, DSP the guy, doing his best to try and connect the dots on a very intricate and complicated story that isn't explained all that well. So if you liked Hellblade 1, you're going to like Hellblade 2, you know? If you don't like that, if you're looking for a game that has robust, amazingly challenging combat and stuff like that, this doesn't have it. Why did he have to say it like that though? Can we run that one back? If you're looking for a game that has robust, amazingly challenging combat and stuff like that, this doesn't have it. Yeah, I don't know why he felt like he had to say it that way. And he even gave it a little shake. He shook his jowls a little bit when he said it. If you're looking for a game that's 40 hours long, because for some reason gamers have now been like trained to expect an insane amount of gameplay out of any new game, then you're not gonna like this game either. So it's not gonna have robust combat and it's not gonna be a lengthy game. All it has to offer is a cryptic story and good visuals, great DSP. You're really selling everybody on this game. But of course he wouldn't miss out on the opportunity to shit on video games and the video game industry and the people that play video games for expecting some sort of content to actually be in the game. Yeah, sorry to break the news to you DSP, but when people pay for things, they typically want an amount of content that feels justifiable for the price that they paid. Things are getting more and more expensive and people have have less and less money. So it's all that much harder to justify parting with any of it. And one of the ways that these companies seem to be trying to get you to part more with your money is by providing you more content, even if that content isn't always worth it. The game is going right for what the first game was, only advancing that story and pushing the visuals and audio. It, some people will argue it's a tech demo, okay? Well, all right, maybe it's a tech demo, but is it entertaining? Are you immersed? Is it fun where it catches you and you wanna keep going? That's the real question. 
If that's the real question, DSP, if those are the only prerequisites that have to be met in order for you to enjoy something, then you're better off just going and watching a movie. You have no business playing video games. Because once again, you might have noticed that in the list of things that he just mentioned that were important to him when it comes to this game, gameplay and gameplay mechanics were not something that he mentioned. If the only things that you're actually interested in are the graphics, the story, and the immersion, then like I said, you're better off to just go and watch a CG movie. But of course, DSP is the exact person that will tell you that he's not interested in any CGI in movies, that he would much rather see practical effects and he's not interested in any sort of computer generated anything in a movie. But when it comes to a glorified tech demo of a video game called Hellblade 2, he's absolutely content with wasting his audience's time and just walking through this game. How many games out there have a ton of gameplay, but within a few hours you're bored, right? I'm going to be honest with you. Dragon's Dogma 2. That's a game that apparently has insane amounts of gameplay, but you play for like five hours, you've seen almost everything besides a few of the big monsters, you know the gist of the game. So, what's the point? Right? Like, <laughs> what's the point of a game that you're just already, oh, uh, say, all right, here we go, grind for another 80 hours now, same fucking game, right? If just knowing the gist of the game from the very beginning DSP is a problem for you, then I guess Hellblade 2 is honestly a non-starter. Because you've already told us it's going to be exactly like Hellblade 1, the only thing that's going to be different is the story. And if that's all that needs to be different, then you have no right complaining about Dragon's Dogma 2. You see how your logic, when actually applied to things fairly, just doesn't make any sense DSP? How you can't actually stand on the opinions that you state? And that's before even addressing the fact that there were multiple classes and enemies and locations that DSP never went to. So he's really got no business stating that he knows what the rest of the game is going to be like because he has no idea. Unlike Hellblade 2, which apparently has very similar combat and puzzles to the first game. Again, reinforcing that the only things that have changed are the visuals and the story. And I just want to clarify very quickly that I don't have any issue with Hellblade 2. If you want to play it and enjoy it, absolutely have a blast. I hope you enjoy it. But DSP's logic doesn't make any sense and it goes directly in the face of all of the things that he says about video games. I, I, for me, and this is my personal experience, you can disagree, and that's fine. Everyone has different tastes. I would prefer a game that no matter when I'm playing it, I'm having a good time, I'm riveted, I'm hooked, and I want more spoken like a true addict. I'm going to run that back one more time and just listen to the way that he describes his ideal game. It sounds like he's describing exactly gambling or gotcha games like WWE champions. No matter when I'm playing it, I'm having a good time. I'm riveted. I'm hooked and I want more. Just pathetic. Goes to a game that delivers an incredible amount of content, but it's all repetitive and not interesting and kind of boring. You know what I'm saying? So here you go. I'm just like, you know, <clears throat> and I, I will compare this to a game a million years ago. None of you will remember the darkness Two. None of you will remember that game. Okay. Nobody will remember The Darkness 2. Isn't that game like a cult classic that a lot of people actually love? And why wouldn't anybody remember this game, DSP? It only came out in 2012. I thought your audience was full of 20 to 40 year olds. At least that's what you're always telling us. You're meaning to tell me that 20 to 40 year olds don't remember 2012? I find that really hard to believe. It was a game that I played early on in my YouTube career. And I remember when The Darkness 2 came out, I hadn't played The Darkness 1, so I had no clue if I was going to like it. But at that point, I was trying to cover all the hot new releases, and this was one for this particular week. And I remember there were other games out at the time as well. And when I played The Darkness 2, okay, um, basically here's what happened. I started playing it, and I was immediately hooked by interesting gameplay elements, but a story. Even though the game was supposed to be based around this first-person shooter gameplay with, like, tendrils and monsters, I was hooked by the story. And the funny part about Darkness 2 is it's a very short game. It's about, I think I want to say it's five to six hours long. So it's a very short experience. But every moment you're playing, you're interested and riveted by what's going on. There's a dual story plot line where you don't know if you're really there or if you're in a nut house and imagining all of it. Does that sound familiar? I mean, it's kind of similar to the plot of the Hellblade games, right? Is that all a story has to have in order to keep you entertained, DSP? Is that what draws you in and keeps you hooked? Just constantly not knowing whether or not the thing that you're actually seeing on screen is actually happening in the universe that the game takes place? Maybe what I said towards the beginning of this video was entirely accurate. Maybe he does actually enjoy these games simply because he finds that it's more acceptable to be confused in them. And confusion is the natural state for DSP aside from anger. But I'm kind of surprised that DSP is bringing up the darkness to at all right now. Because if I recall correctly, there was a woman in the game and she was actually a vocal plot point. And of course, DSP wouldn't be caught dead talking or looking at a fictional woman in a video game because he's married, stupid. But So it's very mysterious in that regard. So I beat the darkness too, okay? And then I went on to play the other games for the week. And at the end of the you know week, I always kind of did like a review or whatever. I was like, the darkness too is the best game that I've played in a while. It's like six hours long, but every moment I played it, I loved my time in it. 
It was fun. It was interesting. It kept me thinking. The story was engaging. At the end, it had a good ending. I was like, that was a great game. The other games I'm playing are more gameplay-centric, but they're just not that interesting. This game hooked me, right? And I think that's what they're going for with the Hellblade series. They know that with the style of game they're making and the budget they have and the, you know, the production that they're putting on, they're not trying to beat other games. They're, you're not going to play Hellblade 2 and be like, holy shit, that combat engine is so much better than God of War Ragnarok, right? Yeah, no one's going to say that. You're right, DSP. Nobody is going to say that because I have yet to hear a single person draw any sort of comparison between that game and God of War. But once again, I'm inclined to say that DSP is just better off watching a movie. If he's less interested in the actual gameplay, he's less interested in the gameplay mechanics and much more interested in the story and being hooked by a good narrative, he either needs to watch movies or just go read a book. He asks literature channel when. The point is, <clears throat> they're trying a different thing. If you're into that, then by all means, stick around today on my streams and check it out. I'm playing this all day. And it, the reports are, if you know how to play the game and you absolutely rush through it and you ace every puzzle and you beat every fight on the first try, you can literally beat this game in like five hours. But for most people, you're going to walk around and explore. You're going to be wanting to just understand the lore and look for items. You're going to take your time immersing yourself in the world. And then the game could be anywhere from eight to ten hours long. Okay? Probably, you know me, with the interaction and everything we do on the streams, likely it's going to be longer than that for me. I would guess that this playthrough probably would be around 10 hours for me. Because, you know, with me talking with you guys and everything, it always takes a little bit longer. Um, he says that with such confidence, such bravado. Oh, you guys know me. It's probably going to take me longer to beat this game than pretty much everybody else. As if that's a good thing. As if there aren't other games that he could be playing for his audience that they would probably enjoy more than this. Just so obnoxious. Almost as obnoxious as him pretending that he actually gives a shit about any of the worlds of the video games that he plays in. Or that he's actually interested in any of the lore. The guy can't even be bothered to watch lore videos on YouTube when he doesn't understand the entire plot of a video game. You really think that he gives a shit about the mind? minor details that make up the world, you're out of your mind. I wish nobody had ever taught DSP the word lore and that the word lore was removed entirely from his vocabulary because he has no business using it. So that is actually why I'm playing it all day because I wanted to get a good chunk into it. If we play it all day today and I get like five hours in, arguably we'll be halfway through the game. And that means that over the next coming week, I could continue to play it and beat it. And then we just, you know, in one week, as opposed to if I just played it one stream today and I only played it in one stream increments, we're talking probably four streams to beat it and that could take like two weeks. Who the hell wants to take me two weeks to beat an eight to 10 hour game, right? But if he knows that the game is only eight to 10 hours, according to him, I hear it's much shorter, but again, according to him, why wouldn't he just make sure that he beats the game that day? Because I promise you that nobody's gonna be interested in this playthrough come next week when he finally gets around to beating the last little bit of it. Very few people are even interested in his chat right now. And this is literally on the day that the game came out. You think that those same people are gonna be interested one week down the road when they've already beaten the game themselves? This is yet another example of DSP just just not knowing how to utilize his time and capitalize on the popularity of a game that he's currently playing. So that's why I'm playing it so much today, because I know some people question, why is Phil, he almost never plays the same game all day long, why is he doing it like that? I, I want to get a big jump into it, okay? <clears throat> okay, but here's the thing, I'm just going to say it right now, I am absolutely not going to put up with people who just want to be negative people in the chat about this style of game. If you're someone who likes Dark Souls games, this is not Dark Souls. If you're someone who likes God of War, this is not going to be the length of God of War, all right? Or, and it's not going to have the robustness and the complexity of the gameplay engine of God of War, all right? The one thing this game is supposed to excel on is the visuals. So let's look at that. Let's focus on that and say, is this game visually compelling? Did they do, did they pull something off here that's pretty remarkable for a console, okay? Um, how about the story? Is the story riveting? Are we getting caught in, up into it? Are we excited for it, right? That's what you need to be focusing on. Dude, who are you? Legitimately, who do you think that you are telling these people what they should and shouldn't be judging a game based off of? You're setting up the criteria as if you're somebody. You're an e-begging internet clown. Your opinion on video games is null and void and has been for a very long time. If your audience isn't interested in watching you play a game, then you have no business playing the game, DSP. It really is that simple. And I love to see the people in DSP's chat throwing the things that he says right back in his face, even if they are LARPers. I mean, you can see two different Don Finucci chats right now on the screen saying, so we're not allowed to speak honestly about the game? And it's locked at 30 FPS. How is that good visuals? Both great questions if you ask me. We already know the style of game it is. You don't go into a telltale narrative game and say, where's the gameplay? Right? Same thing there. You don't you don't go into Dark Souls and say, where are the vehicles? Why can't I drive? <laughs> right? But it seems like today everyone has this weird preconceived notion of what needs to be in a game and you must check off each checkbox on this weird 
good game checklist to say if a game is good or not. Well, wait a minute. Hold on a second. This game's only eight hours long. Immediately, it's bad because there's not enough gameplay. Wait, the gameplay takes a backseat to narrative and visuals? Oh, that's awful. That's a big demerit there. Like, what are you talking about? There's different games <clears throat> for different people. Games are better when they do different things. If every game was the same and was aspiring to do the same things, there would be no variety and it would be bland and boring. I don't want everything to be bland and boring. Given the criteria that DSP has just laid out in front of everybody though, it's impossible to critique a game at all because every game is supposed to be unique and different and not comparable to each other. And while I have to agree that it's stupid to say that Dark Souls is a bad game because it doesn't have any sort of driving mechanics or vehicles, but it does make a little bit of sense to me that if a game is lacking gameplay, then it's not a very good game. It could be a great narrative experience, it can be a great experience in general, but I wouldn't be willing to go as far as say that it's a good game. By the way, I'm not saying that if this game ends up being bland and boring, that I'm going to sugarcoat it. I'm going to tell you what I think truly about the game every moment that we are playing it, okay? If I feel like this game should have been 60 frames and it's detrimental because it's running at only 30, I'm going to tell you that. Then you might as well just go ahead and say that right now, DSP, start the game play off with exactly that because there's no justifiable reason why the game would run at 30 and not look better at 60. I can't recall ever playing a video game and thinking to myself while I was playing it, you know, this game would look so much better if it just ran worse, I think. Okay, I will criticize the game fairly as I always do, but I hate that people go in here <clears throat> and they just completely judge a game unfairly based on these fucking notions of nonsense, okay? If this game is truly eight hours long, but it's got amazing visuals, a good riveting story, and I'm enjoying myself when I'm playing every moment of those eight hours, then why is it a bad game exactly, right? But then people will say that anyway. Well, I don't, well, no, you Modern era, you can't have a game that's eight hours long. <clears throat> Modern era, you better have challenge in the gameplay. This is ridiculous. Ah, uh, yes, because it's completely egregious to have any sort of expectations for the game that you bought and paid for. And even if you subscribe to the idea that it's up to personal opinion and everybody is allowed to think whatever they want about the game, they should also be able to communicate that to the content creator that they're watching, especially if that content creator is going to be playing that very game that they have an opinion on. I don't know why DSP feels the need to quash the negativity in his chat as if that's actually going to solve the problem. Because of course the best way to make people stop doing something that you no longer want them to do is by telling them that it super bothers you and it's going to be a problem. Of course, they won't continue to do that to spite you. Right? Like I say, different strokes for different folks. And the thing is, at some point, you have to learn to respect the opinions of others. Listen, I personally think Fortnite is not a very good game. I think there's better Battle Royale games out there. I don't understand how it went viral besides kids play it and got caught on in that way. And quite frankly, there was a lot of streamers who caught on and did that, like dyed their fucking hair and acted like cartoon characters to attract kids to watch and play the game. Um, but I'm not going to sit here and be like, so I'm going to crap on this game constantly. And I'm going to go to streamers who are playing it and crap on the game in their streams. And I'm going to do that. No. Of course not, DSP. Why would you go to their chat when you have your own stream to express your opinion on? And when you're on your own stream, nobody can time you out, nobody can ban you, and nobody can tell you what you can and can't say. It would actually be completely ludicrous if you did go out of your way to go to their chat and talk about, about them in the video game. But of course, he had to sneak a little jab in there. He had to take a shot at all of these content creators that were just going out of their way to entertain a different audience from DSP. He acts as though it's some sort of mortal sin to try and entertain a younger audience. I hate to tell you this, DSP, but a young your audience also needs to be entertained. They're looking for entertainment and they're going to find it one way or another. It's probably within everybody's best interest that there are entertainers out there that are willing to put on a more family friendly persona in order to entertain that younger audience. Because the last thing that the world needs is a younger audience watching you, learning your mannerisms, speaking like you, and having your opinions. If you don't like this style of game, that's fine. Don't stick around today. Because as of tomorrow, I'm playing Street Fighter 6 all day. Later this week, I'm playing indie games in a marathon. After that, we're going to get back to Fallout 4. And we're going to have about Multiverses is coming up next week, right? In the next month, I'll probably play a good variety of games leading up to the Shadow of the Erdtree DLC in Elden Ring. So no matter what kind of a game you like, I'm going to be covering that good variety of stuff, okay? <clears throat> And for any would-be content creators out there, I would highly recommend against telling your audience to go somewhere else and watch somebody else's content. Of course, there's nothing wrong with giving shoutouts and recommending that people go watch other content if they're looking for a certain style. But to outright tell people, if you don't like my content, go somewhere else. It's just not a good idea and it's not a good look. There's no need to be so abrasive to these people. If you don't like what they're saying in chat, DSP, just ignore it. Allow them to conversate amongst themselves. There was definitely a much better way to handle this. And of course, DSP did the exact opposite so that's good right but please don't be here being incredibly negative towards this all day long because it's not your cup of tea 
Because I'll tell you right now, I already saw people in chat. It seems like they were going like this. <laughs> I can't wait. Today's my time. I can sit here and crap on Hellblade 2 all day. Uh, no. No. You're not going to do that. Because if I see it, I'm going to warn you. And if you continue to do it, I'm going to time you out. And if you continue to do it, I'm going to ban you. And he's just attributing malice to his own audience, to the people that are supposed to actually enjoy his content. Because it's totally out of the realm of possibility that these people just don't enjoy the game and we're expressing that opinion to the people that they like to talk to in DSP's chat and even try to express that opinion to DSP. Of course not. They have to have ill intentions. They have to be doing it out of malice in order to make everybody else have a negative experience. I thought that DSP was the guy that constantly needed everybody's feedback and that was the way that he ran his stream. Well, that feedback just came in on this video game, DSP. And apparently, a lot of people, shout out a lot of people, obviously, aren't interested in watching your gameplay. They're calling it a seven-hour walking sim snooze fest. Because there's no point in fucking sitting here just to spread negativity. No one cares about that you don't like this game. Then go do something else and come back when I'm doing something that you do like. You don't go to the Taylor Swift concert, sit front row, and yell at her, You suck! I hate your music! You suck! You just don't go to the concert, right? And that's such a terrible analogy, DSP. Mostly because you would have to go out of your way in order to be front row at the Taylor Swift concert. Do you know how expensive those tickets are? What a commitment that would actually be. The bigger aspect of that being a terrible analogy, though, is because you become part of a routine when you stream every single day the way that you do, DSP. And that really should be the goal. You should want to be a part of people's routine. Having the same audience that comes back time after time is definitely a good thing. So when they show up for the day and they see that you're playing a game that they outright despise or even just slightly dislike they should be able to tell you that they should be able to communicate that to you so that you can judge accordingly whether or not you're going to continue to play it for your audience you know the people that you're supposed to be entertaining also a concert is a completely different experience than your streams dsp because when you go to a concert you know that they're going to be playing their music you know that you're going to be getting a live concert style show when you show up to the dsp stream games are constantly cycling in and out and his mood is constantly jumping from one extreme to the other so you never quite know what experience you're going to get and you should be able to communicate communicate your pleasure or displeasure with that stream. That's how streams work. They don't accept feedback at a concert. <clears throat> so there's no reason for you to be sitting here and complaining all day about a game you don't like. All right? I get it. Not anyone will like this game. Not, it's not It's not one of those please everyone style games. You know what I'm saying? It's not. So I hope you guys understand that. I've actively chosen to play it because it's shorter. It's a Game Pass game. It fits into the schedule for variety purposes. That's why I'm playing it. I'm curious, is it as good as the first one? Is it not? Is it better? What have they done with these visuals in the seven years that they've been developing the game, right? Is it amazing now? Does it blow you away? You know, how about the story? Because I'll be honest, like I said, when I beat the first one, I was confused. I was scratching my head. What actually happened in that game? Will we actually get more answers during this one? I don't know. <clears throat> Maybe not. Maybe we'll beat it and it'll be just like the first. At the end, you'll be just as confused when the game started and uh, you won't know what's happening, right? And that's okay as long as we had a good time. And that's what that was my feeling in the first game. Like, I enjoyed my time in it, even though I was still confused at the end. So it's fine. <clears throat> And notice how the language went from as long as we had a good time to I had a good time. Because I think even DSP started to realize as he was saying the sentence that it is very clear that these people that are making these complaints aren't going to be having a good time regardless of whether or not he is. And we also just got confirmation that DSP deems it entirely acceptable to complete a video game and be utterly confused and just not figure it out. Because as long as you have a good time figuring out the story and actually understanding it just isn't important. Even though it's one of the main pillars of the video game and one of the only things that it actually offers. I just don't know how you can claim to enjoy a game story and say that you were hooked and enveloped in it, and then ultimately admit by the end that you had no idea what was going on. What were you intrigued by then? What got you hooked? So let's actively try to enjoy each other's company. Let's try to enjoy the game. And if you don't end up liking it, that's fine, but please don't just sit here and start being, oh, but I don't understand. It doesn't. It's not as good as this game. It doesn't have this from this game. It's not supposed to. It's not those games. That's the whole point. If you don't like it, that's fine. I'm going to give you my honest opinions as I'm playing it, like I always do. Maybe I won't like it as much as the... I don't know. I'm a different person. Seven years, it's a long time. It changes you, right? So maybe I will be more critical of this one. I don't know. But I can tell you, to see people already in my chat this morning, oh, yeah, finally, oh, I've been seeing all these negative, awful things on the internet about the game. That's not even correct. If you look at reviews, generally, reviews are positive for the game. People are saying it's a good narrative experience, great graphics, great audio. Yes, it's gameplay light, but so was the first game. So where is all the... Oh, everyone's crapping on it. Who? It doesn't even exist, but that's what I mean. They saw two people complain about it. Oh, everyone's crapping on it. Now it's time for me to dump too. No, go take the dump in someone else's stream. All right? This is not the toilet of the internet here. Go do that somewhere else. <clears throat>
And once again, DSP is flip-flopping on whether or not he actually sees these gaming website reviews as valid criticism or not. Just because all of these totally legitimate review sites that DSP totally trusts say that the game is good, you, there's no way that anybody on the internet could have a valid criticism about the game, you guys. They're all, of course, doing it out of malice because they just love reveling in the negativity. And for anybody who is genuinely curious on how the gameplay went for DSP, he found both the combat and the puzzle mechanics of this game incredibly mediocre. No shock there. And he wasn't as nearly impressed with this game's visuals as he was with the first Hellblade game. So I guess it's really bad in 0 for 3 right now. But the one saving grace, at least in DSP's eyes, is that he is interested in the narrative still, so he's looking forward to completing it. From everything that I've been told about his gameplay, he's got about an hour left of it, and yet he's put it off until about next week because he's super busy playing other games. Sound good? Sounds good to me. And by the way, Cat agrees. Something else that Cat probably agrees with is some of the comments on my last video, which we're going to be taking a look at. So of course it's shout out to the 60 skulls. Anon Voila says, has anyone tried listening to the guy audio only? You realize how bloated and disconnected the things he says are. He really believes the garbage he rambles on about. And as a majority audio style person myself, you're absolutely right. Everything that DSP says is completely disconnected, disjointed, and bloated with so many words that are unnecessary. It's honestly difficult to follow. I often find myself asking what we're even talking about anymore during the pre-stream. And I think that that's an intended feature and totally not a bug when it comes to the DSP stream experience, because the harder it is to actually follow what he's saying, the harder it is to call him out on all of his nonsense, or at least you would think so. Forever Asylum 4000 appears to be on the DSP defense force in the comments, ironically of course, saying DSP is always correct and did nothing wrong. All of you people who hate on him are losers who probably only leave your house once a week to run errands and have a fat wife and no kids and a cat and no friends. And of course, all of that was spoken like a true king. I really appreciate the comment, brother. And Norscout went ahead and did us all the favor and summarized the entire video without making it 48 minutes long by saying, I didn't do what I needed to do in order to be successful in my chosen career. And that was really the entire point of both of the last videos that I did. It was a 40 minute rant in its totality, exclusively from the guy. And all it really boiled down to was that he failed to make any of the adjustments that he needed to make in order to be successful. And he has no one to blame for that but himself. Just despite how many people he seems to be trying to blame for it. But speaking of people to blame, all of you guys who watched the video, that's who I'm going to blame. So thank you for watching this video, especially if you made it this far. Hopefully I'll catch all of you guys in the next video, but until then, make sure that you check out other detractor content and dive deeper into that, Snortex. <laughs>